Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Textron Aviation suspends work on Citation Hemisphere. USAF Thunderbirds return to flying. And Apple grounds drone flights near its new campus. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's April 23rd and this is Airborne Unlimited. Textron Aviation has suspended work on the Citation Hemisphere large business jet, citing ongoing problems with a Safran Silvercrest engine selected to power the new airplane. Textron CEO Scott Donnelly announced the suspension during a conference call with analysts last week. I think everybody knows there have been some issues around the engine that was slated for that aircraft, Donnelly said. At this point, we have basically suspended the program and are waiting to see how the engine plays out. And then, based on that, we'll make our decisions and move forward knowing what the performance of the engine is. Problems with the Silvercrest engine led to the cancellation of the Dassault Falcon 5X jet earlier this year. The Citation Hemisphere was announced just prior to the 2015 NBAA convention. It was to have been the company's largest citation, with seating for up to 12 passengers and a range of up to 4,500 nautical miles. Textron said that the suspension will not affect employment levels at Cessna's operations in Wichita, which employs about 9,000 people. The company is continuing development of the Denali single-engine turboprop and the twin-turboprop Sky Courier. The Citation Longitude is expected to receive FAA certification by the end of June. After the break, Representative Jim Bridenstine confirmed as NASA Administrator. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news by at aero news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The United States Senate voted Thursday 50-49 to 49, to confirm Congressman Jim Bridenstine as the 13th Administrator for NASA. The vote was along party lines, which is unusual for the confirmation of a NASA Administrator. Bridenstine, a former Navy pilot, had been nominated by President Trump to lead NASA in September 2017, a move that was welcomed by the space industry. But Democrats, led by Florida Senator Bill Nelson, opposed the nomination. The FAA is issuing an airworthiness directive that will require inspections of certain CFM 567B engines. The directive will require an ultrasonic inspection of fan blades when they reach a certain number of takeoffs and landings. Any blades that fail the inspection will have to be replaced. The move follows the uncontained engine failure aboard a Southwest Airlines 737-700 that resulted in the fatal injury of one of the passengers on board the airplane. The FAA has approved an STC allowing Carpenter Avionics to install its Big Sky MVP STC digital engine display upgrade on Cessna Conquest II 441 series turboprop aircraft. This is the first commercially available digital engine system upgrade certified for this aircraft model, and the first commercially available STC for a twin turboprop aircraft application of the Electronics International MVP 
50T system. Boeing has celebrated the flyaway of the first BBJ MAX airplane, which extends the range, performance, and cabin comforts of the world's most popular business jetliner. The first airplane, a BBJ MAX 8, will now be outfitted with an auxiliary fuel tank, which will enable the new owner to fly up to 6,640 nautical miles in a standard configuration. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The USAF Thunderbirds demonstration team has resumed operations and practice following the fatal injury of pilot Major Stephen Cajun Del Bagno during training on April 4th. Thunderbirds Commander Lt. Col. Kevin Walsh released a video announcing the resumption of operations. While our hearts are still heavy with the loss of our wingman Cajun, we know he'd want us back in the air and preparing to recruit, retain, and inspire once more," Walsh said. These flights will focus on maintaining our team's proficiency with the demanding maneuvers of our air demonstrations," Walsh continued. They will also strengthen our confidence following a trying two weeks for the squadron. Walsh said that the Thunderbirds are also supporting a robust investigation process to ensure the highest level of safety in the team's operation. The team and its leadership are taking a long, hard look at our processes and training to ensure that we are performing our mission the right way and mitigating risk. Walsh did not give a timeline for a resumption of the team's performance schedule. We ask for your patience. We are not currently canceling any performances beyond Columbus Air Force Base, but we stress that further cancellations are still possible. After these messages, Apple grounds drone flights near its new campus. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. Drone pilot Duncan Sinfield has been regularly capturing videos of the construction of Apple's new circular campus dubbed Apple Park, being built in Cupertino, California. But it looks like Apple is not particularly keen on the idea. The circular building described as looking like a spaceship has been under construction since 2014, and the building has been in use since September 2017. Sinfield had been posting new video of Apple Park about twice a month, but recently he says that he's been asked to leave by Apple security personnel shortly after he's launched his drone. On his YouTube page, Sinfield wrote, Security at Apple Park generally responds in two white Priuses to my precise takeoff locations in 10 minutes or less. As always, I respect all requests by Apple security to land my drone and leave the area when asked to do so. Sinful says he thinks that Apple is using RF technology to track drones operating near his campus. Some social media users think Apple should ease up on Sinfield. For example, Twitter user Marco Armont said that the videos are the best recruitment ad I've ever seen to go work for Apple. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.